record on the computer. Okay. And I uh, want to welcome you all to our worship service this morning. Just a reminder that um, at least on my screen, there's a, I have a, what's called a and um, and so uh, it allows everyone to kind of see things um, uh, a little bit better. Okay, and uh, um, and so uh, that way you can see the screen a little bit bigger. Um, but right now, uh, as we often do, uh, this is just kind of a time to to focus ourselves on worship. And uh, um, if you've been here before, you've probably noticed our introductory video. And I'm going to get ready to share that introductions. Here we go. Maybe there's another way to do this. All right, so I welcome all of you to our worship service here today, and uh, um, we're going to uh, begin here uh, with our opening prayer, and uh, uh, Sam Jones is going to be uh, reading the prayer, so uh, Denise, let's go ahead and, and unmute Sam's screen, and uh, let me pull up that PowerPoint. Uh, Sam, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? So, yep, Ken, just give me a second here as the PowerPoint loads up. And go with slideshow, current slide. Okay, all right, Sam, would you read our prayer for us? Okay. Through the week of stress and demands, we come to you this day, O Lord. Awaken us again to your comforting and loving presence in our lives. Help us to be open to the many ways in which you have called to us and sustained us. Make us ready to be of service to you. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Um, okay, uh, this is our kind of our welcome time. Um, and I'm going to switch over to gallery view so I can see everyone here. And uh, so everyone go ahead and, and uh, unmute. Uh, so uh, all of you have been unmuted. This is just our time just to say hi, hello. So everyone's unmuted. You, uh, for you to say something, you need to unmute your screen. So hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. All right. So let's go ahead and, and mute everyone back up. And uh, okay. All right. So I do have quite. Um, I do have quite a bit of announcements just to share. Um, and so I'll do that before we get to our, our prayer time here. So uh, one, uh, a couple things to lift up. Um, Ed Kinnersley is turning 75 on Friday the 13th. And so we want to lift up Ed uh, and his birthday. 
And uh, I know Ed had uh, talked with him this week, but one of the things that my daughter told me is that uh, this year we had three Friday the 13th. And she knows that because uh, one, she had to fly home uh, as she was leaving Europe uh, as the pandemic was starting. And then she mentioned a second time. And then of course, coming up this week, so she got, her comment to me was, um, uh, well, no wonder 2020 is the way it is. So, uh, uh, but, uh, anyway, uh, Ed, we wish you a happy birthday and we hope that, that you have a great day on, on, uh, on Friday. Okay. Um, let's see. Another announcement is, uh, this comes from, uh, Vicki Schmidt, uh, please, uh, the tapestry circle will meet on Saturday. So Saturday the 14th in, at 9.30 in the fellowship hall. So the tapestry circle is gonna meet uh, this Saturday in the fellowship hall, masks are required. And that's one of the nice things about the fellowship hall. It's large enough uh, so that you can sit apart and uh, so um, make sure that we've got that uh, announcement. And then um, this comes from Sam Serta. Uh, so I want to lift up um, uh, Sam. Uh, so uh, he sent me this text. Update on Deb's mom. Uh, she is isolated. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, she uh, was taken to the hospital last week. She tested positive for COVID. So um, Deb's mom is isolated, but still seems to be doing better. On a sad note, we lost her dad, Johnny, yesterday. Not sure if it had anything to do with COVID. He did have a fever on Friday and passed on Saturday morning. He was 95. And they also have a very close friend fighting for his life. They flew him to Hastings Hospital. Since there was a bed there for COVID patients, he is responding to the meds. Happy note, we did gain our ninth grandchild and her name is Emma. Thanks for the prayers and please continue to hold these people in your, in your prayer. Lift up uh, the Serta family. Um, so sorry uh, to, to Deb losing her dad. They don't obviously know if it was COVID related. And that's one of the things uh, my wife that works uh, for Panel Public Health said that a lot of times we don't know for about two to four weeks if the death is related to COVID-19. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, glad that uh, Deb's mom is doing okay. We definitely lift up. Um, you know, the loss of her father and uh, and just the tough time to, to grieve uh, when you can't be there. And, and then their friend who was able to uh, be in the hospital in Hastings. Um, I've been told that things that COVID-19 uh, is really, really blowing up in the central part of the city or the central part of the state. And, and so uh, very fortunate that uh, they were able to find him in the hospital. So a lot of, a lot to pray for. And next week, we will actually have a, uh, um, uh, when we share the prayer list, we will have a separate list uh, for COVID-19 related folks, because we've had a lot of folks um, that are testing positive. Um, oh, and then I just received this from uh, uh, Chuck Richter, Chuck and Pam, uh, prayers for Rick Richter, uh, surgery to remove tumor on his spine. Oh my goodness. And so, uh, so we lift up uh, Chuck's brother, Rick, uh, and, and uh, uh, that is scary. I hope uh, everything goes well with that surgery. And um, let's see here. Um, let's see this from the Tomlinson's. Uh, I would like to lift up my younger brother, Patrick, who had been in the hospital with a septic knee. He's been in there for about three days and had to have an IV uh, put in, and then they're going to send him home. And um, uh, he, he's gonna be on several antibiotics, uh, but anyway, we can lift him up in prayer. So we lift up uh, um, uh, Patrick, and that's uh, Steve and Becky's younger brother, Patrick. And so we're thinking of you guys, um, hope it all goes well. Uh, um, tough, tough situation, tough situation. Um, you see one here in the chat. Oh, Knox turned four yesterday. So, uh, so uh, uh, for uh, the Smith family, so happy birthday to Knox. So we've got uh, a couple birthdays to lift up. Uh, Ed is, is going to be turning seventy-five at the end of the week, and Knox turned four yesterday. So happy birthday! Um, so uh, it, it, please continue to use the chat function or send me a text. I'm going to uh, just. Uh, turn it over to the prayer list here and give me a second as I 
uh, share our prayer concerns so that you'll see that in front of you. There we go. Okay. Uh, so these are the lists that, uh, as I said, uh, we've got several folks. I uh, visited with Shanna this week. She was really, really sick. And the day that I talked with her um, was the first day she felt like she could get out of bed. Uh, Marjorie, that Deb's hurt his mom. We just lifted her up. Uh, Harold Maxey, Spanky, uh, is doing okay, um, but certainly is in isolation in the at uh, uh, Chimney Rock. Uh, Ken Johns is recovering from COVID. Uh, Kim's got some health concerns. Uh, Pat Wright's got some health concerns. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Johnson um, um, is recovering from COVID, but he was really, really sick. Uh, so we lift up Kristen, Kristen um, that had a baby boy, uh, small, and so he's going to be in the hospital for a while. Uh, Kathy Yo's sister, Sue, is recovering from COVID, uh, but it's got, if you remember, some permanent damage. Uh, Melissa uh, is a friend of Lois's. Uh, we lift up Gunner and Sam Jones. Uh, Jenny, uh, Deb Cottowalder, uh, Martin Munoz, and then Robin Gomez, who uh, tested positive last week for COVID-19. Uh, the folks on our cancer list is Lindsay and Ann, Cindy, Bev, Sharon, Lonnie, Kara, uh, uh, Cinda, Doug, Pam, Jim, Amy, and Travis. Uh, those recovering from surgery is Lois, and uh, Lois uh, mentioned to us this week that she is back at home. Uh, Barb, Judy, Bonnie, Soren, Jana, and Maya, and Dina, and, and just continued prayers. We lift up Henry and, and Evelyn, uh, Kayla, the Greenwald family, Jerry Weinman and family, um, uh, the great and challenging work of Epworth Village, uh, was, um, just anything uh, that when you're working with teens and, and to mental illness, um, and, and then of course the pandemic, but we, one of our, our facilities there in York, uh, and certainly to our servicemen and women and their families and, and all that they do for us. And then you see the list there of uh, folks in our care centers and, and assisted living. Um, and, and we say a special prayer uh, because uh, we know that, you know, as the pandemic has really, really hit our uh, part of the state, um, we're starting to see some positive cases, um, not only of, of the residents, but also uh, for the caregivers um, and and just how difficult it is to care when you're constantly changing um, um, protective equipment and, and doing some of those things and so so just a lot of a lot of the challenges um, so um, and there was a one more announcement I want to give uh, don't see but continue to, to send me a text or use the chat function um, um, one of the members of the building committee asked me to make a, make a comment about where we are in the live stream. So uh, some of you know that uh, we are, we've really reached the maximum of what we can do with Zoom. Zoom was never intended for worship. Uh, we would like to be at a point where we can do a live stream. So right now, and, and, and there's a newsletter that's going to be coming out this week. So you will be, there'll be an article about that in the newsletter. But as of right now, we are planning to live stream the worship service on November 29th. Um, now it will be, we will still have the Zoom service that day. But the reason we're going to live stream it is um, we're going to be working out the bugs. And so uh, there's going to be a lot. We're going to have to experiment with equipment, sound, lighting, software. We know that there are going to be problems and challenges. Think back to all the times back when we first started Zoom and there were things that worked and things that did not work. Uh, so what we'll do is, is the, the live stream. Um, our goal is to have it up and running for November 29th. And um, hopefully that we don't have any problems. Um, and, and then kind of moving forward, we'll continue to live stream. If everything works out great, wonderful. And then we'll kind of move away from the Zoom service. Uh, but we'll let you know on that. And the first thing first is really to make sure the Zoom works. We've had a lot of conversations with a lot of different pastors and churches throughout our community. And they all tell me it's not easy. And there, it, it is a challenge to make sure that everything runs smoothly. And so there'll be a lot of work, but that's the goal is, is by the end of the month is to do that. And, and uh, 
Um, so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll have that. Uh, uh, so that's kind of right where the goal is, and and but we'll keep you well informed as to where things are. But as I said, uh, raise the newsletter. We've got a lot of information, a lot going on with the troop. Okay. Um, we lifted up the birthdays and anniversaries, as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, the two birthdays um, that were, were spoken of. And then uh, I'm going to share this the screen here um, of this one. And let's see the PowerPoint, uh, because this is a grocery list. So current slide. There we go. Um, I want to thank uh, Becky and, and Chris Counts. Uh, they, they came in this week and went through our necessity room. And we have had a lot of folks that have come in and, and uh, been asking for food. We're starting to see that demand. Uh, so um, I'll leave this up here for a little bit. Uh, you see, so if you're going grocery shopping, um, we're in need of peanut butter and jelly, uh, spaghetti sauce and spaghetti noodles, canned vegetables and canned fruit, tuna, oatmeal, and cereal. And um, uh, let us know uh, if uh, to per you know, we could take any food that, that, that you would like to give us, but if you were purchasing groceries specifically, these are things that are in need. And I want to thank uh, the tellers and the couches uh, for putting those sacks together. And what's nice for us here at the office is we just have the sacks all ready and we hand uh, the folks uh, the food um, when they come and they ring the doorbell uh, and uh, we provide some food for folks. But as I mentioned, peanut butter, jelly, spaghetti sauce, and noodles. Uh, canned vegetables and canned fruit, tuna, oatmeal, and cereal. And uh, there will be, this list will also be in the newsletter as well. So I uh, just wanted to, to lift that up. And, and uh, So uh, we now come, I'm going to show a very short video about um, uh, our mission uh, for the month of November, December. And after we watch the video, I will tell you uh, about that. So as I uh, get things ready. Here we go. And uh, mission project. So um, what you saw here is uh, a gentleman that was hand digging a well uh, there in Ghana. And so uh, uh, this was a, a project that I have been working with uh, for over 10 years now. Um, and uh, so the mission for November and December is split among four different organizations. And uh, we'll, we'll be hearing more about the organizations, but one of them uh, that we donate to in the mission. Uh, so if you decide to um, write out a check to missions for the month of November, December, part of that goes to what we call the Ghana Water Project. And it's through this organization. And when I was there some nine, 10 years ago, uh, they were working on raising money so that they don't have to rely on hand diggers uh, that go down uh, and, and dig out by hand uh, that well. But we've also found uh, that village that we went to, it took us an hour just to hike to it. So sometimes a place is so remote that they cannot rely on, on mechanical equipment. They have to rely on hand diggers. And I, I'll never forget when we got there and you saw the first picture of all of us gathering around. And they and so they yelled down to the guy and he started climbing up. <laughs> and and that's what his job was, was to was to dig that well for that community so that they would have uh, clean water. So, so that's a, one of the projects that we're donating to uh, for the month of uh, um, November and December. We just combine all that together and you'll be hearing more about uh, those mission projects. I want to make sure, let me just check my phone. I think I had... Um, Okay, I just want to make sure I got all the announcements. Okay, uh, next one is the children's time. 
And so I'm going to uh, ask the, the kids, and, and I know Knox is with us. I know Berkeley is with us. Um, and so any of the other children, the children of all ages, uh, we invite you for our children's time here. And um, so um, I, uh, yeah, one second. There, we got things really, well, the, the green screen, I, I won't worry about the green screen, but you can't tell, it's, I actually just turned the light off in my office. And so, so that's why you're seeing the screen here really glowing because you don't have this light up here. And so um, one of the things that, that I want to remind you of, and, and you might have something like this, uh, and that's pretty cool. So you have a flashlight on your phone. And so in my office here, I can shine it around and it's, it's shining all of the, the different areas I have. Uh, I have the, the screen back here it's shining on. I've, I've got uh, some places that I'm holding my newspapers. There's the camera. And, and the best part about a light, especially like what you find on a phone or through a flashlight or a candle, is that a light is not just for me because see there there's the light on me but the light is also for you so in fact i'm going to shine this uh you can see the light as it shines there and so one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is the message that comes from god is not only a light for me but also for everyone else because i know and i'm looking right at you berkeley anyone else any other children that, that's joining us is that um if your power went out, and I know you, Berkeley, you would get your flashlight or maybe your dad's phone, your mom's phone, and you would shine a light to help your brother's dad, help your brother Knox. I know you would do that. And uh, and so not only is this light really important for us to shine on all the things in our faces, but also for everyone else. So, okay, so let me, there we go. Gotta turn my light off here. Okay, give me one second as I turn the light back on. I need one of those clappers that I turn the light on and off. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, just remember, God's light is for you. God's lights. Okay, uh, next thing is our prayer time. And uh, Connie Russell is going to be saying the prayer for us. And so Denise, go ahead and, and unmute Connie's uh, um, Zoom screen. And so Connie, are you there? I'm here. All right, so give me one second as I get out of that. We pull up the prayer. There we go. All right, Connie, would you pray with us? Let us pray. Oh, Lord, there never seems to be enough time to do all the things that are demanded of us. Schedules become crowded. We live by the clock. We think we are ready for all events that will come our way, but we are rarely ready for you. We would like, to like you to come to us at a planned time so that we can fit you into our busy lives. Forgive us, Lord for trying to make you a scheduled event. We have moved you to a time on our weekly calendars. Yet you are the eternal God who has always loved us and been ready to receive us. Help us to learn that with you as our foundation, we can handle anything that comes our way. With you as our focus, all things pale in comparison. Let us look at the priorities in our lives and see where we have placed service to you. Amen. All right. Thank you, Connie. And as we often do during this uh, time of, of shared silence, um, I'm going to share the screen of our prayers and uh, just uh, remind you that, that this is the, the folks that we're praying for. So um, we've got the, the list before you, and um, uh, but also use this time to pray silently as well.
Oh, Lord, it just seems as I'm looking over this list that it just is getting longer. Um, and then we add uh, the folks that have texted me, um, uh, family members in the Tomlinsons, uh, family members in the Surtas, uh, uh, family members that have not been brought to um, my attention, but uh, we know that, gracious God, they are on your attention. Um, I just ask a special prayer for each and everyone here on this Zoom call. Uh, I say a special prayer for those that will be um, watching the service uh, later on in the, uh, um, that we watch in the service later on uh, throughout the week. I just ask that gracious God, as, as you continue to, to watch over us, you continue to be by us, that more importantly, that you envelop us with your grace. There is so much that of, of your love and your guidance that we need right now. Um, there is so much that, that we lift up in prayer, whether it is health issues, whether it is uh, cancer issues, whether it is just something in our home, whether it is at workplace, whether it is something uh, with family, whether it is just something that we cannot deal with. And sometimes we need a little extra. I just thank you so much uh, for those that are helping me out with the service here today. And more importantly, that you are with each one of us, especially now, as we say to you, our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go back to the speaker view here. Okay. Um, here in a minute, uh, Steve is going to be reading us our scripture lesson. And what you're going to hear is that it comes from our gospel. And, and as you might expect, uh, Jesus is saying something about the coming kingdom of God. Now, these are part of these lessons where Jesus wants us to become something different because of this event. And this event, for Jesus, is the coming kingdom of God. Now, you're going to notice that, that Steve will, will mention the kingdom of heaven. And in Matthew, it means exactly the same thing. And today is an apparent lesson on being prepared. Now, before we have our lesson, I don't think I need to remind you that everything that we read is colored by our current season. And if you think I'm going to talk about the election, uh, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Um, maybe the gospel lends a bit to that, but I, I think I'm going to leave that for our Wednesday devotion. Today, I want to talk specifically about the pandemic, and, and here's why. About a month ago, two semi-trucks came into town uh, handing, out, uh, with, handing out chicken and pork free for anyone that was to go up. And it was held at the old Albertsons parking lot. And the plan was to hand out this food around 11 a.m. And so they asked volunteers to get there about 9.30. And that's when they got there. And when I got there at 9.30, okay, remember, we were going to hand out at 11. When I got there at 9.30, the parking lot, the old Albertson's grocery store, was already full. And I was told that people were showing up at 7 a.m. That's five hours before we were handing out food. On Wednesday nights, we have our soup today. Now, it's not really soup, and we can't have people sit in our fellowship hall. But what we do is we hand out the food outside uh, by the alley by, on our north door. <clears throat> and if you were available on Wednesdays, say about 3.30 or a little bit after, I invite you to drive down Ninth Street. Because what you're going to see is people starting to park their cars right up next to our apartment as they're lining up for food that we're not going to serve for another two hours later. So um, let me take a step back. It's not just the hungry. I, I want us to think about those items that we have been selling out. The grocery stores have been selling out during the pandemic. So uh, Denise, this is going to be a great time. Let's, let's go ahead and unmute everybody. So everyone has been unmuted. Go ahead and I want you to, to so once your screen is unmuted, I want you to tell us what item you've noticed in the grocery store has been sold out 
either now or sometime during the pandemic. Go ahead, anybody. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. What else? Clorox Hamburger. wipes. Clorox wipes. What else? Hamburger. Hamburger. What else? Butter. Butter. What else? Nap napkins. Napkins. Paper towels. Paper towels and napkins. Yes. Anything else? Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Yep. Yeah. There was another one. Eggs. Eggs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone else? Uh, all, all great lists, all great. Let's go. Okay. Uh, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, Denise, go ahead and mute everyone back up. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering that. Um, uh, so I, I came up with it. I looked up the definition of hoarding and uh, the definition of hoarding is a persistent difficulty discarding with possessions because of perceived need to save them. Now, you might be thinking to yourself of the show Hoarders. This show is a favorite of my oldest daughter. She loves to watch this show where uh, this TV crew comes into this home and they find stuff just piled high. And, and over in the corner usually is a bunch of rats or cockroaches and, and the house is structurally unstable. In fact, you've even found homes where the house has collapsed because there's just so much stuff. So, um, so speaking of hoarders, uh, we're actually going to do something right now is um, I'm going to initiate a poll. And so um, I'm going to give you a minute. And so the poll is before you. Go ahead and um, what have you hoarded during the pandemic? So go ahead and vote. Have you hoarded any of these items during the pandemic? So about 15 seconds left. Okay, so um, I'll give you the results here. It says uh, about 10% of you hoarded toilet paper, 5% uh, meat, 5% paper towels, 10% hand sanitizer, and 81% did not. Uh, no one hoarded those little Debbie snacks. Uh, um, so, uh, all right. Well, thank you very much for, for uh, uh, sharing that. And, uh, oh, I can share the results. I didn't know I could. Oh, that's, that's nice. I just learned something new on Zoom. Oh, there's the results. Okay. All right. Don't let me get out of that screen. Okay. Um, I, I want you to know that this is not a sermon about hoarding. Uh, this is a message about becoming, about what we, about what we are becoming, about what we want to become, about what we want to be empowered to, be, to become. Today is a message about becoming alive, and, and really, this is going to make sense when you listen to our God. So, Denise, this would be a good time to unmute Steve Tomlinson. Uh, Steve is going to be reading our scripture passage. So, Steve, are you um, are you unmuted? I am. Okay, one second here. I am. Yep. All right. Can you hear me? And uh, I can. Yes. Oops. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So, Steve, go ahead and, and read our scripture passage. Okay, hang on just a second here. It's not quite showing up there. Okay, it says. Um, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, 
there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open up, let us in. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. All right. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Okay. What is going on here? Well, at first, it appears we have a straightforward lesson about hoarding. Well, okay, no, that, that's not true. It's not fair. Um, but maybe on preparation, on, on being prepared, uh, on, uh, you know, the Boy Scout model. So it got me thinking about uh, this true story. <clears throat> William is a 36-year-old carpenter in, in Vancouver, British Columbia, and he wanted to be um, a stuntman. And he knew that people would be coming all over the world for the Vancouver, Vancouver Film Festival. And to catch their attention, he decided to jump off the city's Lion Gate Bridge. Here's the story. He could see himself gracefully descending to the deck of a passing cruise ship and disengaging himself from the bungee cords as smoothly as James Bond to the awe of the ship's passengers. When word got around, producers would marvel at his work and discuss over cocktails who would hire him for their next film. William planned his stunt for over two years, checking the height of the tides, boat schedules, and deck layouts. He even lined up sponsors and recruited assistants. The stunt began perfectly. William took a swan dive off the bridge, trailing the bungee cord behind him. It, he felt it grow taut as it stretched and began to slow its descent. The tennis court, uh, the cruise ship drew near and near and nearer. Somehow, William had miscalculated the length of his bungee cord. Subsequently, he slammed into the tennis court, hurled into a volleyball net, bounced against a deck railing, and found himself flying once more into the air, watching the cruise ship slowly sail away. Don't worry, Williams did survive, although he failed to make his James Bond appearance. People on the boat loved it, he told the reporter. They were screaming, yelling, and waving. A witness, however, described their reaction as shrieks of horror. When the stunt was over, William dangled above the water for a few minutes, confirming that no bones were broken and making a mental note to use a shorter bungee cord next time. William is still waiting to hear from the movie producers. Preparation, being prepared. So uh, let's take a look at our, our gospel. Um, but, and you knew that was coming. Jesus's explanations about the kingdom of God are never what they seem. Remember, this is, it is not a question about how many times to forgive or pay equity or, or, or paying your taxes, and today is no exception. The coming kingdom of God is about becoming a law. Uh, listen to uh, this scholar give this interpretation. Earlier in Matthew's gospel, we read an assortment of parables that begin with the phrase, the kingdom of heaven is life. Now, in this episode, Jesus has changed his tense. In every previous instance, the introductory phrase was homo ia esti. Homo ia is an adjective meaning like or the same nature as. And esti is the third person singular present active indicative form of the verb to be. In our selected gospel lesson for this week, however, Jesus introduces this kingdom parable with the phrase tote, uh, whatever that Greek word is, uh, being the third person singular future passive form of a verb, meaning it will resemble or it will be like. Whew. So what does that mean? How about this? Previously, he had focused on the present reality of the kingdom. But here he speaks deliberately of the kingdom as a future reality. So what is a future reality? Well, you've probably heard verse 13 uh, interpreted this way. You know, verse 13, keep awake, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour. Uh, probably gets interpreted sometimes this way. Jesus is coming. Get your affairs in order because some are going and others are not. Kind of like a left behind novel. But you see, I, I don't read that. I, I definitely don't preach it that way. Uh, when I read a future reality, 
I hear something akin to readiness, uh, living the life of the kingdom of God, uh, having a certain quality of life, uh, not for one day, but for a lifetime. It, it actually kind of reminds me of, of this great story. Uh, there was this uh, rich merchant that went to New York seeking this one-of-a-kind diamond. He, he wanted to add this to his collection. So he goes to his favorite diamond jewelry store. And the owner of the store assigns his best diamond excerpt, uh, expert to close the transaction. And uh, after that, the merchant hears this man describe in perfect technical detail the diamond's worth and beauty, the merchant decides he's not going to buy it. But before he leaves the store, the owner says, hey, do you mind if, uh, if I show you that stone once more? The merchant says, hey, I, I flew all this way. Sure, why not? And so the owner gets that stone, puts it into his hand, and he does not repeat anything. He doesn't repeat anything that the other expert said. He simply stares at that diamond. And he describes the beauty in a way that revealed why this stone stood out amongst any others in the world. And with that, the merchant died. And so as they're closing the transaction, the merchant says to the owner, um, I, I got to ask, why were you able to sell me this diamond when your expert could not? And the owner just says, well, that salesman is the best in the business. He knows more about diamonds than anyone, including myself. His knowledge is why I pay him so well, but he lacks something that I have. And then the merchant says, what is that? He goes, you see, he knows diamonds but I love them. That story reminds me, um, are you just going through the motions? It, you know, knowing what you're supposed to do, uh, go to work, pay the bills, eat, or are you alive? Are you spiritually alive with the passion for something that you love? Uh, right now, we're going to do something that uh, that my clergy coach uh, does with my group. Back when we used to gather together, we would say a prayer. And then we would change the tense of that prayer from the third person to the first person. And I'll tell you, it's a lot harder than you think. Uh, take, for instance, the Lord's Prayer. We often say, forgive us our trespasses. Really, we should be saying, forgive me for my trespasses. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to look at that opening prayer that Sam read to us. And um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the the, ver the the tense of it. So let me open this up. And uh, there we go. Okay, so I want you to read this with me together, but change the tense so it's, it's an I statement. Through the week of stress and demands, I come to you this day, Awaken in me again to your comforting and loving presence in my life. Help me to be open to the many ways in which you have called to me and sustained me. Make me ready to be of service to you. Amen. I'll tell you, this idea of going through the motions versus being alive really at home this week. I'm on a Zoom call. We, uh, every Wednesday, we get together with the area pastors here in the Valley. And, and this week, the host on that call asked us, how are you doing? Now, he didn't mean, how's your church doing? He, he didn't mean, uh, how's your attendance doing? Or how's your, how's your youth group doing? He said, how are you doing? And here were, just, here were the answers. I am tired. I am weary. I'm trying to figure out things that aren't working. I am trying to balance the needs of people that don't want to be bothered with this virus talk versus this growing, not versus the growing number of people in my church who have the virus. And this is coming from pastors who currently have the virus, or their parents do. I'll tell you, it was a humbling call. Each one of us is just to the most. 
but we're trying to to stay positive. We're we're trying to to focus on Jesus, but we're just feeling this this weight and stress of everything. And so when I say this notion of uh, are we just going through the motions until, especially until this event is over versus feeling, are we spiritually alive? I'm including me in that statement. Wow. We so need this scripture telling us about the coming kingdom of God. No, 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 no. Check that. I so need this scripture telling me about the coming kingdom of God. I don't need to think about hoarding or the election or Nebraska football or who was foolish or who was wise or the weird part about the bridegroom coming at midnight. No, I need Jesus to remind me of a future reality that going through the motions right now is temporary, but coming alive, becoming spiritual alive is part of the expectations of the coming kingdom of God. I think this is a, a good time to, to look at our question for the period. This event, pandemic, quarantine, disruption, whatever you want to call it, this event in our lives, what is it making you become that you would have never become without it? This event, uh, and we've talked about, this event can make us rally, it can make us irritated, it can make us negative, it can make us foul mouth. <clears throat> this is what happens when we get stuck, when we are just going through the motions. But if we focus on the passion and love of Christ, well, this event can be seen as a new beginning, as an opportunity to think outside the box, a moment to be thankful. That's why I'm going to do an experiment. Um, so, uh, Denise, uh, go ahead and, and uh, unmute everybody. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is... Um, um, now, Zoom is different, so everyone is on a different place in the Zoom. I'm going to just go around, and so everyone right now, go ahead and unmute your screen, but don't say anything yet, because I'm going to give you the direction. So this is a little experiment. So um, so Becky, uh, uh, Becky and Chris, I went, and at the time, I want you to just boo. Roger and Bev, I want you to say thank you. Steve and Becky, I want you to boo. Carol, I want you to say thank you. Uh, Chuck and Chris, I want you to boo. Um, Sam, I want you to say boo. Uh, Lauren and Shirley, I want you to say thank you. Nicole, I want you to say boo. Uh, um, let's see, uh, I see Linda and Bud, I want you to say thank you. Um, the Smiths, I want you to say boo. Connie, I want you to say thank you. Uh, Alice, I want you to, to boo. Uh, let's see, uh, Sam Serta, I want you to say thank you. Even Rhonda, I want you to say boo. Penny, I want you to say thank you. Uh, Joanne and uh, Al, I want you to say boo. Vicki and um, um, Phil, I want you to say boo. Uh, Pam, I want you to say thank you. Denise, I want you to say boo. Uh, Jack and Tony, I want you to say thank you. Don and, and uh, Meredith, I want you to say boo. Ed, I want you to say thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, Jan, I want you to say boo. And um, try to see who else is on the call here. Sandy and Don, I want you to say thank you. Barb, I want you to say boo, and uh, and then the, the last one, 350, just say thank you. So, all right, everyone, right now, so, why is it, say thank you or boo. Right now, go ahead. Thank you. 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 Okay, yeah. now, now those that said thank you, I want you to, I want you to have a big smile on your face, and those that said boo, I want you to scowl at the camera. Go ahead and do that. <laughs> Uh, oh, thank, you. thank you. All right. Okay. All right. So go ahead and uh, uh, Denise, go ahead and mute everyone back up. Okay. So my question for you is which do you want to become? I want you to think on that question as I share this illustration. Henry Van Dyke wrote a story which he called this. Described the beautiful and prosperous little city in its surrounding countryside, situated in the midst of a desert, a, a wonderful place to live and love and labor. A river ran through it, providing water, but the river was not the source. Rather, there was a spring high up in the mountains, constantly welling up with living water. This was force. It was opened long ago by a certain 
it was opened a long ago by a certain man who sacrificed his life to do it. And so the people of the community would visit the mountain spring regularly, singing and praying, and also reverently whispering the name of their benefactor. This kept the spring flowing and the river well supplied and the whole city well fed. But in the course of time, the people began to tire of their pilgrimage to the mountain spring. As the older folks died, the younger ones turned to other things which left them no time to visit the soul. Then they began to doubt the value of the visit, and at length they denied the tradition altogether. So at last the source was forgotten, except by one young woman who remembered and faithfully continued to make the pilgrimage. The result was that the spring no longer gave its water in abundance. The riverbed became all but dry, and the city and the country around it became poor and almost uninhabitable. The only thing that prevented complete ruin was the faithfulness of that young, of that one young woman to whom a wandering visitor said one day, you are the life of the city, for you alone remember its secret is in your heart, and your faithful keeping of the hours of visitation is the only cause why the river has not failed altogether. And the curse desolation returned. So would you say that last line with me? You are the life of the city, for you alone remember its secret is in your heart, and your faithful keeping of the hours of visitation is the only cause why the river has not failed altogether, and the curse of desolation return. Now, replace that with an I statement. I am the life of the city, for I alone remember. Its secret is in my heart, and my faithful keeping of the hours of visitation is the only cause why the river has not failed altogether and the curse of desolation return. If we focus on the statement of become, we will get through these moments going through the movement and remember the passion that Christ keeps in our heart. The source resides in me. The source resides in you. The source resides in us. And with that, we will become alive. Amen. I'm going to uh, share the screen right now of our special music. One. This is in celebration of kind of this entire Holy Week. This is Rejoice. The Lord is King. And as we look on into Easter and how he was King, he's King of the whole earth. But just to see how he died, he rose again, showing that he is truly the risen, victorious King. So that's what we're here to celebrate. All right. And a great song. I'll take the mic and then the stage is yours. Thank you.
was uh, Kevin and Heidi Chang. Uh, many of you know that they they were here for a live concert, and then we're planning on coming back in May. Uh, we had a virtual concert, uh, but they are amazing, and they have uh, um, um, provided us with the music that I have used in the background. Certainly, the the uh, the opening of of our introductory video is all is their music and have they given us permission to share that music and and uh, um, when this is all done when we are spiritually alive we will have them back in concert and they're absolutely amazing uh, uh, we now have our offering time our prayer of thanksgiving and um just to remind you that there are three ways to give. If you are ever in person worship, we have a locked box. We don't do the offertory or the offering anymore. Um, we have uh, good old mail service, 900 Oat Street. Uh, you can certainly mail your checks in that way. And then we also have the service online. Our website is gearingumc.org. Very easy, gearingumc.org. And not only do we have a place that you can give that way, but we also have our devotionals. So if you go there um, every Wednesday, we'll have a new devotional from the book, um, St. George and the Dragon, and that will be available uh, up there as well. So lots to look at on your website. So let us have our prayer of Thanksgiving. Uh, dear Lord, I just ask that uh, uh, that we be thankful. Um, I, I want to thank you for uh, uh, each person <clears throat> that gathered here for worship here today. Um, I, I want to thank you for our access to the Internet. <clears throat> I want to thank you for um, our ability to purchase a Computer. I, I want to thank you for um, the microphone that I speak in and the, and the power uh, here at the church and 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 the, uh, the internet here at the church that allows me to to share uh, this worship service with all those in a safe uh, uh, way. <clears throat> Gracious God, uh, we know that there are so many pressures uh, on us right now, so much weight, and and we are we are going through the motions. It's hard to go through those motions. It's hard uh, to go down that road to, to become something else um, and to feel that sense of being spiritually alive. But we know that the coming kingdom of God is a future reality. And with that, we cling to your sense of hope. And with that, we thank you and allow us to give what we can so that we can make sure that the church is around as a future reality. This we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to now um, have our benediction. And so give me one second as I share the screen of our benediction. And we go down here. Um, slide. There we go. Okay, let us read this together. Um, God has called and chosen me to be witnesses <clears throat> to hope and peace in God's world. I go in peace in the same healing, reconciling love <clears throat> and peace will be with me and will be with you. Um, let me, let us, let me all go and serve the Lord, our God, and all that you and I do. Um, okay, until next week. Um, as I said, the newsletter will be coming out this week. And uh, so uh, there's a lot that we're sharing. A lot has taken place. We've got some exciting things coming up for Christmas. Uh, we're really thinking outside the box uh, with everything because um, we have no choice. I mean, we're, we're in that time period. So I want to make sure you, you look at our newsletter and uh, be safe. Boy, COVID cases are really, really on the rise. Uh, we pray. Uh, we thank you all for, for your sharing the information with us. And, and we miss you all. We do. We really, really do. And uh, we're thinking of you. And until next week, until next Sunday, um, take care. Be safe. Have a good week. <clears throat>